Hi and welcome back to the channel and apologies first off I've just finished a week of nights so I'm a bit tired I've had no sleep yet but I was excited to want to do this video after being inspired by British Legion Nick's recent videos he's been doing out for Victory at Sea. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and as I said right there at the start I've been really inspired by British Legion Nick um, with, with, with doing the Victory at Sea project that he's been doing and uh, so, so we've, we've, Mel and I, Jamie, we've all got together and said let's get these boats out and start doing them up, let's put a pause to the Pole Pally campaign that we're doing at the moment, the project building for that and get the boats out and hopefully you know you guys just hope you enjoy seeing what we've done. I have to say, it's been a brilliant project. The painting style that we chose, uh, we've chose to follow um, a chap channel called JCS, and I'll leave a link in the description below, and that shows you all the paints and everything that we've used. We followed exactly the same process. The only things that we've done differently was, we went back and did an extra highlights, edge highlights and that around the hull of the ship and bits and pieces. But again, you don't have to do that. It's just, you know, we just did that. That's just for just for a bit of um, seeing what else we could do to the ships and that. But at this scale, it doesn't really matter. Pros and cons with these ships, they're lovely models. They really are. Um, I think Warlord's improving with its resin. Um, the only criticism I have with the, with the models so far, and some of them, they are a bit warpy in that. So again, a little bit of warm water, sort of holding down with a peg either end on a bit of flat surface on a little bit of wood you know flat bit of wood overnight and that should hopefully solve that out and then just a file off underneath and then you know everything should be okay but like i said that is my only sort of slight little criticism um i had to add the set for christmas um, unfortunately the three um uh, uh main ships uh for the um just japanese were, were missing from the kit so <laughs> Brilliant, wall of excellent, phone them up, give them obviously the packing code, who packed the, the, the kit stuff and everything, and all in there, photographs and everything to show that it wasn't there. Um, I sort of made sure it wasn't in the sort of rubbish bag from the wrappings and that they put through away. But uh, they were brilliant, sent them straight out replacement parts and replacement ships, sorry. And, uh, and so again, hats off to Warlord, they, they did really help me out there. Uh, so spot on well, thanks for that. So without further ado, what we're going to show you first is the Imperial Japanese fleet that's in this starter set. And then afterwards, we'll show you the uh, um, the USS uh, fleet. So let's turn the camera, let's take a look. So first up, guys, we have the three Fubuki class destroyers. Now again, apologies if I get any of these Japanese names wrong. And that, I'm doing my best not trying here. But um, yeah, Fubuki class destroyers. These first appeared in sort of the late 1920s, around 1928, and, and served throughout the, with the Japanese fleet throughout the, the duration of the Second World War. Um, quite numerous in, that, uh, in this class. So again, you can have quite a few. And this is, goes back to sort of like one of the things where, you know, making sure you can put your own names and that on your ships and that, because I mean, sometimes you're going to be stuck with obviously what Warlord and that produce. But um, yeah, they paint out really well. I know British Legion had a couple of issues with funnels and bits and pieces and that, and, uh, and, and Conan Towers, etc. And they sort of managed to get around that on some of his ships. I have noticed that, especially in this kit, whether or not it's the same throughout the whole uh, range of ships, there's two different types of resin. Um, and this one is a more darker grey resin for these uh, destroyers and the cruisers etc and it looks like the um, the battleships and that use like a white resin so this is a, a finer quality resin so just something to bear in mind guys okay um, so that's it that's the, that's the destroyers and uh, I'll go on to the next one so next up we have the Furataka class cruiser there was two ships um, in this class and these were um, commissioned in the sort of mid 20s 1925 26 sort of time um, two ships were obviously the Furataka and the, the I'm this, I might get this wrong the Kako um, um, and they were served, again served in, in the Second World War, um, but unfortunately they were lost um, before any sort of major refits and that could be carried out on these ships. Light cruisers, um, again, for, for game purposes and that, these light cruisers and that are, are very good. They're quite agile, they're very, very sleek. Obviously, they can take as much damage as obviously what the heavy cruisers and that can take, um, but they are very, very versatile and that in, in, in the game and that. And, uh, and certainly should be, they should be sort of fast and that. But um, packed out with lots of guns and that, big eight inch guns on these guys. And uh, so yeah, 
sort of worth uh, sort of investing in the other ones for the, for the for the class and that. But again, like I said, in the sort of with the destroyers and that, it's a shame because obviously if you've got another one of these, it would say obviously the uh, for attacker um, for the for, for attacker class cruiser. And that's what's on the other side of the, of the boat. It's obviously the, cl the classes um, and obviously the name within the classes on the left hand side. But if you could get the um, names, you could print off your own names and that. That would be a lot better. So I suppose you could. You could follow that down and then uh, print your own one off. But there you go. That's the for attacker. So these are the Mogami class heavy cruisers. And um, again, these started to be sort of commissioned in the late 30s. So we're looking just prior to the Second World War starting. So sort of late 19, sort of 37 onwards and that. Uh, four ships and that in the this class. And I'm not going to pronounce them all because I can't. I'm going to be totally honest with you there. But um, obviously the Mogami in that there, you're seeing that in, 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 in there. So you can say it's basically it's from 1937 you say um, all the way sort of through the war they were being designed um, and there was there are some sort of uh, refits and that that was going on with the ships that were you know the older ships and that in this class um, big big heavy cruiser um, again eight inch guns and that on these things really do pack a punch once they do hit um, and again for, 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 for cruisers and that they you know if you look at the actual speeds of these things they, they were quite quick uh, for their for their size these, uh, you might have remembered me saying in that back in the uh, uh, rule book review and that about the Washington Treaty. Now, going back to the Fur Attacker class um, cruiser, the one previous to this, that was built using the treaty's rules. Um, these cruisers were built, should have been then still under the Washington Treaty's rules, but like every nation towards the sort of like the mid sort of 30s onwards and that were pushing the boundaries. Um, because obviously, navies around the world where one would get a bit advanced in somewhere else and the other navies around would cop it and so forth and they'd do their own thing so you could see there was an arms race brewing within the navies around the around the world so there we are guys that's the japanese mogami class heavy cruisers so first up for the american fleet u.s fleet we have the fletcher class destroyers now you mentioned destroyers for anyone for the second world war most people will look up and say yeah the americans had numerous amounts of fletcher class destroyers to some to some point more than 170 were built during the course of the war these these were mainly sort of commissioned from 1942 sort of onwards but again it just goes to show that the power and the might of the american um industry that they could produce this number of ships as well as rebuilding their navy since Pearl Harbor. I mean it's phenomenal I mean achievement to to to, to achieve in that to, to design all and and obviously produce all these uh, uh, ships for that for combat in wartime situation. Armed with five inch guns five of them and that again very very powerful guns and that for for this type of ship and that and a lot of them um, and obviously um, like quite a bit of AA and obviously with, with, with torpedoes and that obviously for that last bit of close in sort of uh, sinking the ship job uh, <laughs> but um, yeah lovely lovely models and that we chose on these ones same we're using similar sort of colors and that from what we used for the um, Japanese fleet but on some of them and that we decided to use like a darker gray and that darker gray is actually German gray Vallejo German gray and and that and just sort of painted them all through to make them sort of like a look a bit different when you go back and look at some of the painted uh, sorry the colored plates and that of these these ships and that they are looking a little they do look a little bit different and we have tried to put a little bit of camouflage and that down the hull on some of them and that as well sort of break up the silhouette of the, of the hull of the ship so that's the Fletcher class destroyers then we'll move on to the uh, cruisers. So first of the US cruisers and that of this box set is the USS Indianapolis, a Portland class uh, uh, cruiser. Five of these ships were originally um, going to be commissioned to be built, but only two were actually built and that was the obviously the Indianapolis and the Portland itself. Commissioned in 1933, armed with eight inch guns. Um, this is cruiser again, never sort of lightish cruiser, but very fast and nimble. I mean, they say it's a light cruiser, but with eight inch guns and that, you would think that's quite heavy. I'll just show you the sort of tops and that there. Um, as I was saying with the destroyers, also, we sort of tried to sort of change it up in that a little bit of a darker, make it look like a bit more of an armored deck on there, it's different color, different silhouette, a bit of camouflage on there to break up the, the, uh, the hull of the ship. Um, again you know really really nice and these are quite sort of good detailed ships and that on these ones and that sort of really pleased with those um so that's it so that is the uss indianapolis so here we have the next up is the northampton class uh heavy cruisers these ships were um originally sort of commissioned in the 1930s 
There was around six ships of that of this class. Um, armed with, say, eight inch guns. Uh, so I'll just tip this one up here, the old Chicago, so you can sort of see that in there, look. And then I'll do the same, obviously, with that one there. You can see what I mean about the... I still got a little bit on that one, but anyway, never mind. Um, again, very good cruisers, very heavy cruisers, and that, and again, in game terms and that, these are, are, are really good. Like all the ships on the all the ships play really, really well in the rules. Um, like I said, you're not going to put a destroyer up against a battleship who's got its full amount of hull points and that. Um, but then again, destroyers are quite nippy in the rules, and uh, there are some modifiers and that to try and hit the destroyers. It's quite good, actually, it's quite interesting. So, you know, it, it, you can play the tactics of this, each ship's and each ship's class and that really, really well. So that's the fleets for the starter set. Hope you enjoy sort of seeing these ships. So we'll just spin the camera back up round there and I'll have a chat about the outro. So what do you think of those two fleets then, guys? I'm really, really excited. We have managed to play a little game uh, in between me working nights. And um, I have to say the new Victory at Sea rules really do reflect the sort of fun style of, of, of World War II naval war gaming. Um, you know, they are sort of lights in the rules and as you might have sort of alluded to in that in the uh, rule book sort of flick through that I've done. Um, but it is a great game, really worth playing, a good, good, a good fun set of rules and, and, and the models and that really do reflect the game really well. Another slight sort of, I suppose not really a criticism really as such of that, I'm not really a fan of the bases full stop, um, and I have, and I, and, but you get over it, you know, I got over it, and it just, and it, it looked great on the table, really, really do. But I just wish they didn't put the names on them, because um, I would have rather have 3D printed my own resin, you know, resin names, and then put them on there for the class of ships that they are. And then that way, on the back of the card where you've got the refix and that for the different ships and the classes and that, you could actually sort of put the name on, but that's just me being a bit, you know, I like I like just a bit of detailing like that. But um, but other than that, no, no, the art that is good, and I and I must admit, you know, I am slowly coming around to this style. So, so without that uh, further ado, we'll wrap it up from here, guys. British Legion Nick, there you go, mate. I said I'd do a video for us, and uh, hopefully, when all this mess is all sorted out with coronavirus and that, that we can get together and have a game with our fleets. And until next time, guys, please stay safe and happy war gaming.